Welcome to this course on Generative Components and BIM, the Quick Start GC101 Creating a Massing Model. This course will introduce you to the basic concepts of parametric design. Even a very basic mass model can benefit from parametrics, associations, and constraints. At the start of any modeling exercise, there are certain variables, like the length, width, height of the mass, the number of floors, the size of the floor plate, and so forth and certain constraints, such as the size of the site, height limitations, and floor plate restrictions. All of these will be used in the creation of a simple massing model. So the first thing we will do is set up a work set in which to build the model. Now in order to start a work session, I need to select a workspace and then create a work set. So I'm gonna pull down the tab here and select the create work set option. And I'm going to give my new work set a name. I'm going to call it GC Quick Start. I'm going to go ahead and put US on here because I will be using the US data set. Or you might want to use the neutral metric data set. And then we'll fill in a description. And then I want to select a template. So the template I will use is the training template US. Or you may want to use the training template and M, which is the neutral metric, if you would prefer to work in metric units. I'm going to leave the, the root folder at the default location and go ahead and select OK. Now the work set is set to the new work set that I just created, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new file to work in. And I'm going to name this file GC underbar mass. Select Save, and that will then open that DGN file. So first let's take a few minutes to review some of the differences to the interface. So first of all we're in the computational design workflow. We'll work primarily in the computational design workflow. And then there are four ribbons here with the different uh, tools for the computational design workflow. In addition we have docked here on the left the node types which will get into and also the transactions player. And we'll cover those in more detail as the class goes on. We have our, our typical view windows that we have. And then we have an additional window, which is the graph. So the graph is where we can actually see the relationship between the different items in the three-dimensional model. We still have access to our floor selector and our typical snaps and locks and the AccuDraw settings. Now the first thing we're going to do as we start up this model is create a coordinate system. So as we know, a coordinate system in any model controls the location and direction of the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Typically any microstation or building designer has a built-in coordinate system, which has a 0, 0 origin in the model and an X, Y, and Z axis. In generative components, however, that coordinate system needs to actually be defined with a node so that we can link other geometry to it. So the first step will be to create this base coordinate system. So on the Home tab, I'm going to go to the Place Geometry group and select the Create Base CS icon. It's going to open a dialog. I'm simply going to select the design model. That's the current model in which to place that base CS, and it's going to essentially place it at the 0, 0 origin. Now I'll see a node go on the graph that represents the base coordinate system, and if I zoom in to my 0, 0 origin there, I see the actual graphic that goes into the model that represents that coordinate system. It has an X, a Z, and a Y axis. I'm going to go over to my view attributes and turn off the grid in the display. Just make it a little easier to read things here. Once I've placed that base coordinate system, I'm going to go to the Transactions tab here. And this is where we actually record the actions as we place items in the model. So I'm going to hit the Record button up at the top here. And it's going to put the, the first item in the Transaction Player, which is Add the Base CS, the Base Coordinate System. So that's one of the first differences we'll see as we're placing geometry and generative components, which is that GC records 
a series of transactions, basically the steps that were used to create the model. And those steps can then be unplayed and replayed and even edited and manipulated. So we will be working with model-based transactions, which basically means we're going to record nodes as we add them to the model. Now the node is another new concept with generative components. It might be a bit strange if you've never worked with nodes before. So the GC workflow requires you to construct the model from a number of elements or nodes. So a line, for instance, is constructed by first creating two points, a polygon can be created from a set of lines, and a solid created by extruding a polygon. A change to the original points that created the line would dynamically flow downstream and change the solid. Now nodes can be geometry, such as a line or a curve or a point. They can be data, such as a slider to specify length or height. Or they could even be a process, such as exporting data to Excel. The dependencies between the nodes and their inputs are retained and visible in the graph view. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.